Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and some news in the world of game engines. Coco's Creator 2.0 was just released today. Now this isn't, you know, that's a big number, 2.0 release, but it's not an earth-shattering change. There's not a whole lot there, but a lot of the change is actually behind the scenes. So there have been some very fundamental changes to Coco's Creator. So if you are a Coco's Creator user, you should enjoy this upgrade. Now if you've never used Coco's Creator before in the past, I've covered it extensively. I'll link down below, so if you want a little bit more detail on how to work with Coco's Creator, it will be down below as long as uh, along with a video showing you kind of a bit of an overview of what Coco's Creator is all about. So I'm not going to go into really big picture details like that. Just basically know Coco's Creator is a free to use cross platform 2D game engine. Uh, most of your game scripting is done in JavaScript or TypeScript slash CoffeeScript on top of JavaScript. It's available on Windows and Mac and it can be made to run on Linux, but it's not officially supported. And as I mentioned, it is completely free to use. What makes Coco's Creator so appealing is that it's an all-in-one package. So you get a full editing environment in uh, as long as your code editing, your API, it all kind of is done together like other engines like um, Game Maker or, um, you know, things along those lines. So you get a full suite together and again, free to use and free is always nice. So let's get back to the 2.0 release. Uh, this is the news release from GameFromScratch.com. I'll throw this link down below as well. And you can see here they have... Um, they improved the renderer. So basically they replaced the underlying renderer with I think the renderer from the Cocos 3D project. Um, so there should be a new more performant renderer. On top of that, you have a bit more customization available to you. Basically you've got um, in the camera component, you have direct rendering entry. You can configure various base rendering parameters in the camera now. On top of that, they also did some cleanup behind the scenes. Uh, they uh, cleaned up the director namespace and the CC namespace, deprecated some old functionality. Uh, you see there's, uh, with quick compile integration, the custom engine only needs to use the developer's developer options compiler engine to quickly compile over in a matter of seconds. So you got some compiler improvements there as a result. Uh, Pre-multiply alpha filter mode and wrap mode configurations for textures. Uh, hmm. Mm. Uh, again, open the WeChat. So they've been doing a lot of stuff on WeChat with very much a Chinese market uh, type um, feature. I don't know that it's used a lot in North America, but Coco's Creator itself is very popular in China. So that's why you're seeing that particular functionality. And then straight into the engine upgrades. Again, you've got some more tweaks to the WeChat platform, the streamlining I was talking about, the new camera component upgrades. Uh, render tree completely assemble the render data directly and submit the render by the render component. Okay, that's not making a whole lot of sense, but basically I think that's an improvement behind the scenes in the end. Uh, they've also got some improvements on the startup process. So you see right down here, start process upgrades, user scripts, plugin scripts can more easily um, interfere <laughs> with engine initialization. So basically you've got more control over how the engine is initialized for these new startup script options. Uh, render texture uh, resource type has been officially added to save the rendered captured content in the camera. And simplified tile map functionality to pave the way for subsequent upgrades, which is nice because tile map support right now is a little iffy. I actually have a tutorial on that if you want to learn a little bit more. Plus, we've got some physics engine upgrades and performance optimizations to the physics engine. So good looking stuff right there. There is going to be a link to a upgrade guide. Uh, there was a bit of an error when they deployed it, so I'm still waiting on that. But there's going to be some details on migrating to Cocos Creator 2. Now, I've tried a few of the projects I did in my previous tutorial series, and they all seem to work just fine. So the, the breaking changes don't seem to be massive, but if you're using a previous version, do be aware there are some breaking changes in this release. And if you go to the developer forum post right here, you will find ultimately there will be a link eventually showing you how to migrate up to Cocos Creator 2.0. Now, if you're interested, oh yes, yeah, so here we go. Uh, is it there yet? No. So keep an eye on this link right here. Uh, there will eventually be a new link there for migrating to Cocos Creator 2.0. It just isn't up right yet. Yet. So if you're interested in learning more about Cocos Creator, on DevGame, we've actually got a full Cocos tutorial. Uh, it's available right there. Uh, just go on in here and you'll see we cover pretty much everything you'll want to know to get started. Things like creating a sprite, Cocos scripting, debugging, handling input, sound, music, animation, collision detection, physics, and tile maps. And of course, there is a video as well. It will be linked there as well. Um, it's, it's a cool uh, 2D game engine. If you're looking, if you like using JavaScript or one of the you know, JavaScript plus plus type languages out there. I do recommend you check it out. The only real downside is you need to log in to access it. Um, so if you're one of those people that hates to give an email address, that is one of the downsides, but that's about it. Um, 
Also, if you're interested basically in just learning a bit more about Cocos itself, going into a little bit more depth, seeing the UI in action, uh, check out this video. I will link this down below as well. It's basically just a bit of a walkthrough or introduction to what Cocos Creator is all about. This video is more specifically about the move to Cocos 2.1, as you see here. And once again, I will throw this link down below and that tutorial series link there and that overview link as well. So let me know what you think. Are you guys already using Cocos Creator? Is there a reason you're not using Cocos creator um you know share with me down below what do you think of this upgrade have you tried out the new render did it improve things for you did you break your existing code i always like to hear those kind of things well i don't want to hear that your code's broken but you know feedback on your experience with the engine always helps other people that read the comments as well so if you've got experience here do share it with the rest of us and uh yeah that's it i will talk to you all later goodbye for now